Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Well, actually, it's Thursday Night Knives. Boy, a bit on autopilot there. Uh, coming up tonight, we're going to take a look at a new A.G. Russell knife, a name we don't hear often on this show, but a, definitely a legend in the industry. We're going to take a look at a knife from a new maker from Newfoundland, and uh, we're going to talk about tips for blade uh, show noobs, which I am. And um, when I spoke with Chuck Gadritis after after we did our interview, he he gave me a bunch of great tips, uh, totally unsolicited, and I was happy to get them. But I want to find out from you all who have been there uh, or to uh, Blade Show West what I can expect and what I should uh, what I should do. Squab twenty seven, how's it going? I can't wait for Blade either. Making the trip from Buffalo, awesome. I grew up in Cleveland, so I know the I know the journey. Ethan, how's it going, sir? Ethan ruins EDC. We got Nick. How you doing, man? Good to have you here. North Code. So I was just about, you know what? Let me just cut to the chase there, North Code. We do have two new patrons, and I wanted to mention them right here. Sean Curry and Ryan Gilman. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, Bryce. Great to have you here. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining the uh, Patreon page and uh, our, our Patreon fundraising efforts. It is so greatly appreciated, and it's, it's so much fun to have uh, new people on board. And, um, and uh, you know, just to have you here. And also, uh, winners, winners, not only uh, of the um, uh, Gentleman Junkie giveaway last weekend, but also uh, I got a new, a new off-grid knife out to one of these gents. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you for becoming patrons, uh, Ryan and Sean. Greatly appreciate it. So uh, before we get going and get into the meat and potatoes of the show, uh, I want to show off what I was carrying today. And one of them I've been carrying a lot. Hey, Michael, great to have you here, sir. And then the other, I don't carry often enough, I realized today as I was slicing a bagel with it, thinking about uh, how, what performance it was uh, giving me. Ben, how's it going, sir? Great to have you. Actually, Ben carries one of these in smaller version. We have Chris. Hey, Blade Ogre, good to have you here, sir. Today, I was carrying my Sabenza 21. Bonjourno. Hey, how's it going, Caleb? Good to have you here, sir. And Quack, how's it going? Woke up from your nap just in time. It's a lucky man who can have a nap um, at, well, I don't know what what to, what o'clock it is where you are. Hey, how's it going? We got a therapeutic edge in the house. Peter, how you doing? In the house. Showing my age, perhaps. Dave, how you doing, sir? Your black cow is on the, on the wing. Back to you. And we have Christine. How you doing? Women carry knives. Indeed. As a matter of fact, I went to, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I uh, had, I went to a 511 store today to get some high tech garbage, you know, the kind of shirts you can wear um, and it wicks and all that. And uh, the lady who checked me out was a knife junkie. It, it uh, you know, she was carrying a, a, a large um, bench made and, um, you know, griptilian. We started talking about knives, and oh my gosh, she's got a big collection too. Love it. Knife Junkie meet up in the pit Friday night. Indeed, sir. Indeed, that sounds good. Let's let's all meet up there. Sean, good to see you, sir. So this will be um, this will be my first time, and we have James. James, always a pleasure. This will be my first time at Blade, as you know, and also in the pit. So I look forward to meeting you all. But I don't know most of your faces, so you'll have to introduce yourselves. Andrew Bentley, how's it going, Sue? Uh, new, newer to watching. Great show. Thank you, sir. Uh, Andrew Bentley. It's a very dignified name, sir, if I do say so myself. Good to have you here, Andrew. Uh, always a pleasure to have new viewers and uh, new new knife junkies in, in the... I'm not going to say in the house. I'm not going to say that. Why am I starting to say that? Here with us tonight. Uh, so today, this was my uh, front right pocket the Sebenza 21 with the black micarta inlays, which start out as gray as the titanium, but they take on my, took on my personal filth signature right quick. Uh, quoting, um, quoting uh, uh, Advanced Knife Pro with that. I just love that personal filth signature. I can't stop saying it. I just think that's the perfect description of how it patinas, how micarta patinas just from carrying it. Uh, I cut a bagel with this today. And my oh my, did that bagel wish it was born cut already. Uh, this thing did just a phenomenal job. Um, but uh, besides that, I really had no cause to cut anything. But I really, really love this knife. And um, let's look close up at these snail trails. Who doesn't like 
how this titanium takes on wear. I love that. And that's from, like I said, pretty moderate carry. Uh, not often and definitely not used hard. Uh, this beautiful edge that you can see here is a Jared Neve original. I, of course, uh, somehow, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't drop this one, but I had dulled the tip and uh, sent it to him, and he put this beautiful, beautiful edge on it by hand. Um, you should really, if you have any dull knives, you should uh, spark up a conversation with Jared and get them taken care of by him. He does a beautiful job. So, Sabenza 21 today. And then, of course, uh, I've been carrying this nonstop since I got it uh, a week ago. That is the uh, Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. This thing is just sweetness and sweetness personified here. Even though it's not a person, it is a knife, people. And uh, it's good to remember that. We don't love our knives. We just like them intensely. Uh, Double-edged, Persian-inspired, though to me it's a clip point. But yeah, Persian-inspired. It's got that. It's like a Persian knife with a little thumb scoop. Uh, and so thin and just carries so beautifully. He made a, an excellent sheath. He, I, I'm assuming all of his sheaths are this good. And this is the Tracker Dan, I think, um, deep carry clip no wait someone someone told me what it was called in the comments and now i've forgotten again uh, but that's just because cameras are rolling and i, I turn into a, a bigger idiot so this uh rides at three o'clock in my waistband and i will have you know the other day at work uh, i had a dress shirt on and i had this on uh, i was carrying this on you know on my hip and i just had it out and my shirt uh, it's not a it's not a pirate shirt it's not like Seinfeld, but it billowed enough that it kind of obscured the shape of this handle, and it's very thin, and it just sits right next to my uh, sits right next to my skin. Not my skin, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I know it was an everything bagel. Okay, everything bagel. So it had a lot to go through. It had everything to go through, and uh, so this was carried out in the open and hidden in plain sight, and so it was excellent. A well-worn Sebenza frame is like natural stone washing. Yes, sir. I would agree with you. And uh, when I, you know, if I ever sent this in to to get it uh, fixed or whatever, I would I would definitely have them leave it the way it is. I like how it is. Incognito. Good to have you here, sir. We're just sitting here talking knives. That is what it is up. And look at this knife. So cool. Double edged. Extremely sharp. Hollow ground. Tiny, tiny, thin behind the edge. Of course, up here with this sharpened swedge. That's not the case. This is more of a gouging, ripping, tearing kind of an, an edge um, because it's so oblique, you know, on the spine. Uh, thank you, Andrew. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I've been following Eric Kramer and Kramer Custom Knives on Instagram for quite some time. And that was the knife uh, that and this other Pical knife he used to make just always caught my eye. And uh, so I finally bit the bullet and got one. That being said, I have not sold off all the knives I, I promised myself I would sell off to make up for this. And it's funny how um, the further and further away from a purchase you get, the less um, the less urgent it seems to unload other knives because, you know, another payday comes. And it's like, OK, well, um, but in the name of discipline, because discipline equals freedom, if you know, if you watch Jocko uh, and that is true. Um, so I will I will attempt to sell something off and be disciplined. So, yep, coming up on Sunday, episode 220 is my interview with Eric Kramer. Uh, that was uh, the interview after which I bought that knife. Uh, I was like, I, I, I seem to remember you said you had a couple of those uh, blanks lying around. Can I, can I, you know, may I, I mean, I know you're busy, but can I? He's like, sure. So check out Eric Kramer. Also, if you're interested in his knives, he's got one right now called the Grinch. Uh, that has a symmetrical handle. It's about the same size as this one here, uh, but it has a, uh, you can get it in like a uh, bayonet ground dagger, or you can get it in a SOG, you know, Mac V SOG Bowie shape or uh, drop point. You know, he's got a couple of different blade styles on that. So very cool. Carrying the Hinder XM 18, three and a half Spanto DLT, no choil. Very nice. I, I uh, really, you know, I have a DLT no choil worn cliff and I just love it. I love the idea of the no choil. Hollywood Tactical, good to have you here, sir. Staying home today so I could finally get to watch again. Well, it's awesome to have you here. I always love your commentary. 
Bryce has been carrying his new umnums on a lot. Quickly became one of my favorites. Bryce, uh, what is it about the umnums on? I mean, I know I love the way they look, especially the Tanto version. Uh, but what is it about the umnums on that you like, say, better than a Sabenza or say, why are you carrying it so much? I'm curious because I'm, I'm, I'm Zahn curious, if you will. Blade Hobby says, hello, fellow knife junkies. Well, Blade Hobby, it's excellent to have you here, sir. Today, I have my ZT0640. Do I have mine? I can never remember the names. Oh, no, no. I know which one you're talking about. Uh, didn't you get a new scale for yours? New scales for your uh, 0640? This is my 0620. I pulled this out just, just for this occasion. Looking at the Grinch now. Isn't it cool? I think the latest one he has up has ironwood scales, which are beautiful. And, um, you know, whatchamacallit. Got my DeMarco Custom Strata XL tonight, plus the Shiro F95. Ooh, nice. Shiro F95. So uh, uh, Andrew was looking at the Grinch. Uh, yeah, the latest one I think he's put up is the, is the Bayonet Dagger. Oh, God. Looks so great. Max the Maker, good to have you here, sir. Carried my Fox Knives Baby Core while... Baby Core? Which one is that again? Damn, can't remember. While going to the knife store today. You went to a knife store. You live somewhere where there are kni knife stores. I love that, uh, and I uh, am jealous. Not envious, but jealous. Got to handle a Sabenza for the first time. What did you think, Max? Do you think it's uh, worth the hype? Did you feel the solidity in your hands, the wonderment? The JS6, awesome, and the Keyshawn Blur, or uh, Keys uh, Kershaw Blur. It looks like Keyshawn, uh, but it's Kershaw. I know what you're talking about. Um, that JS6, I just had on loan. Oh, sorry. I just had on loan from um, uh, 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 Tier 1, and that's a, that's a sweet knife. Caleb Townsend. Uh, had his subvert, Spiderco subvert, and the orange Victorinox Pioneer. Nice. So those uh, those matched. Those matched, right? Because the subvert stock comes with an orange handle, I think. That's the one um, designed by Black Snow Customs, I think. Such a beautiful knife. Grinch sold out. Ah, well, you never know. You never know. Just send him a DM. Uh, he did suggest, you know, because I said some that I know that some people are interested, but he was like, he's knee deep in orders. He said, well, send, send, tell him to send a DM. It might be that I can get it. So if you're interested, sir, please send him one. Incognito carried his Aus 10 Vaquero, excellent choice, and a Cold Steel Tanto Air Light. Now, I don't have that, but I really like the uh, the Tanto blade style on that. I, I really like that sort of uh, um, abrupt angle with the with the wedge like front edge love that excuse me carried the venom jack prototype today i know and you posted some beautiful pictures of that and the wilson combat small sabenza excellent choices both especially the venom jack i love the shape of that handle it's got the flared handle in the middle right that's the one beautiful beautiful knife uh so uh if if you don't know uh that's that's a, a, a prototype for a new Jack Wolf knives knife, and he will be at Blade Show showing those off. So definitely stop by table 5E. 5E, I think, right? 5E, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Carrying the Wee Knives Chimera today. Nice. I'm trying to remember the Chimera. So many Wee Knives, and they're all just awesome. And, uh, yeah, Dave's got... Dave's got the taste to follow for sure. Kershaw bare knuckle, love the bare knuckle in 20 CV, and the marbles Stockman in tortoise shell. I don't have. Uh, I have one marbles knife. Actually, I have it right over here. And this is in white bone, and it's uh, so cool. I, I really, really like this knife, and I think it's uh. It's a well. It's an elephant toe, and I think it's a newer marbles. Marbles has a different history, right? It's got some old, very fine ones, and then some newer, kind of um, uh, less fine, if you will. But I really wanted to get my hands on this pattern, and and I like this knife a lot. Uh, what was that last one? Blade Hobby got the OD green micarta scales for my yeah. Okay, cool. For my zero six forty, do you keep the stock clip on there, or do you like a? Uh, Something else. I put a I put a deep carry on mine. Uh, MXG gear. David E says, "Hey everyone, carried the Chavez two twenty nine and the Cold Steel Recon one today. Excellent. Two full size knives. 
I respect that. I like that. The Chavez, uh, that two two nine comes in a in a tanto and kind of a drop point, right? Blade Ogre has his zero five six two CF, the hinderer, and the launch five Emerson. I know you've been you've been looking for some clip point Emersons, and that launch is a is a new acquisition. I've always really liked it. It's got the Viper style handle, right? Except in aluminum, and I love that clip point that they put on that. Hogue EX-01 and MKM Malg Malga. Uh, that does not roll off the tongue, tongue to me, MKM Malga. Uh, that EX-01 is a great knife. I used to have one. Uh, I, it's like I almost regret every knife I've gotten rid of, but then another knife came in and, you know, slowly, quickly, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> the thing, you know, who do I remind you of right now? Uh, very excited to pick up my new teal KMP uh, Knife Nuts podcast Typhoon at Blade. Ah, oh, what blade? Which, I mean, I know what blade you're talking about here, but what blade shape did you get? Those are just beautiful. That that teal denim micarta looks like. Max says, I like everything about the Sabenza except the thumb studs. A little sharp, a little pointy, and I don't mean to sound like a, well, you know someone who can't handle a, a, a pointy thumb stud, but I, I've always kind of noticed that too. That's that's the one thing. I mean, I love the way they look and I love the terracing, but it, it doesn't have to come to such a, a glass breaker style point there in my in my humble opinion. Oh, that's just a terrible way to show it. Super Freak today and my Carta Elementum, new mismatch Thursday. Hey, you got a mismatch. I, I mean, I do believe that. You got a mismatch in, in lock, lock type, in materials and blade shape uh like today i i was a little bit embarrassed to have two hollow ground uh sort of swept bellied blades on me i'm like where is so i ran back and got oh i don't have it here uh i think it's upstairs but i ran back and got my um, my cold steel little kiridashi folder just so i'd have a straight edge just in case it came up you know, what am I supposed to do? Hey, Michael Blanco carried my new combat Troodon with Merlot. Oh, Merlot chassis and black double edge blade. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that Merlot color. I've been working on my Troodon. This is the, the mini, the puny tro Troodon. Uh, it was starting to get that ringing sound. And so I did the oil trick uh, that that you can find on the website and it just takes for me days now it's finally it's performing for you on on camera but it's it's been obstinate with me hey dark gravity good to have you here nice bike leong ma field duty today awesome i do not have any Le leong ma knives i used to have the crkt eraser which was so cool but i just never carried it again another knife i regret getting rid of uh, but that I loved everything about that. Maybe not everything, but I loved almost everything about that knife. Um, I like Leong Ma's designs, um, but especially the Eraser and the Eraser 2 that he came out with. Uh, though the Eraser 2 kind of refined refined out some of the, the, the brutal charm of the first one. So, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, so I just wanted to let everyone know that if you listen to this show on, uh, if you listen to the podcast, uh, the interview show and the midweek supplementals on uh, on the various podcast apps, well, Jim uh, got our RSS feed. Our RSS feed had been jacked up for quite some time, and our um, our uh, host, our podcast host, we were having a lot of trouble working with them, and Jim kind of geniused it out and figured it out and. So now we are up to date across all of the all of the podcast uh, apps: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, even which I didn't even know we were on. Tune in, and uh, there's one called the Podcast App, and even that one, which was which was even when our feed was good, the Podcast App was behind. Uh, now it's good. All of these right here. Um, so give them a listen. You know, uh, they're, they're still, you know, even though we went visual over a year ago, um, I still try and record them, you know, it thinking of the listener in mind, because frankly, I'm a huge consumer of, 
of audio podcasts to and from work. And whenever I have a chance to be washing the dishes, always have a podcast in cooking dinner, always have a podcast in unless one of my daughters is there and, um, you know, reading to me or, or bugging me about something, no, you know, you know, I love them. Uh, but always have a podcast audio in. So now you can listen to the golden tones of the knife junkie podcast in audio only if you if you uh, so prefer or are in a situation where you can't be watching. So definitely check check us out on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, Pandora, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another little bit of interesting and good, exciting news is we have a, a new affiliate and that is Urban EDC Supply. You may remember we were talking about Chris Taylor's uh, new Nessie locking knife. I think that was just last week right here on this very show. We were talking about the Nessie, and uh, it's an exclusive to Urban EDC Supply, and uh, we are now a uh, um, an affiliate with them. So that's really great news. I'm very excited. Definitely check them out. I am, and uh, when you do check them out, go through our link here at theknifejunkie.com slash Urban EDC, and that's what uh, I'm going to be doing uh, when I buy the Nessie, because I want the Nessie. As I said last week, it's a... It's a really fetching design. Naf Sergeant, great to have you here, sir. Um, just talking about the Nessie. And yeah, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. I think I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that if you demand it, it, it's better than if you ask for it. So hit the like button. Lindy Lou, great to have you here. Uh, Lindy Lou, um, I, I met a, another female knife junkie today and... Uh, uh, women knife junkies are are fewer and further between. So it was a uh, it was a pleasure, uh, just a chance meeting with someone uh, uh, who was checking me out uh, at the who was she was a clerk at the Five Eleven store. Uh, Patty, Stephen, great to have you here. Good morning, junkies from the Emerald Isle, carrying the number two number eighty two Dixie Stockman in elderberry jig bone. That was the very first image I saw on Instagram today. And uh, oh man alive, is that a beauty? I love that. And I love the elderberry jig bone. That is gorgeous. But anyway, check us out on, uh, check out our, our new affiliate link, uh, the Urban EDC Supply. Uh, and you can get that by going to thenifejunkie.com slash urban EDC. That's thenifejunkie.com slash urban EDC. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spyderco, Wee, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel, and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. So before we get to the main topic of the night, which is I need tips uh, as a blade show noob, uh, how to do this. I mean, I was just talking about, uh, I was talking to my wife. I'm, I'm not going to buy any knives there. You know, this is, this is, this is me going to like cover the event and to really, you know, find out what, what, what it's all about. Evening, John. Great to have you here, sir. <laughs> Great to have you here. Uh, so I need some tips. I need some advice. JN, great to have you. Well, I think you are. Yes. Oh, you found the bayonet. Good. Good, good. Uh, so yeah, tips for Blade Show. I want to know what should I do? Uh, what should I look for? How should I manage it? I think it's much bigger than I was expecting. And uh, I'm afraid of buying a knife because if I buy a knife, then I'm going to walk two tables down and be like, I knew, I knew I shouldn't have bought this because I want, really want this one. And that's what I'm kind of afraid of happening. But before you guys tell me this stuff, uh, I haven't heard what you're carrying. I mean, I've heard a couple, I've heard a smattering. Uh, but if uh, you have anything else that you want to tell me you've been carrying today before you tell me your advice, I'd be happy to know because frankly, I need some ideas. I think I need a couple of new knives and I haven't gotten, one. I shouldn't say it like that. I think I need a couple of new folders. Uh, I recently uh, got a, uh, or ordered, paid for, got, but haven't received it yet, a um, one of these Russian knives that uh, Levon from Knife Nuns Podcast, he's, you know, he's been doing these, uh, he's been importing 
doing imports from Russia. God, he's had like three or four really cool knives uh, from Russia. He's got this big giant black one right now that is way tempting. It's got a, a, uh, a scale release, meaning you just slide it to the side and whip it out. Um, and it's very big and burly and like, uh, you know, tactical looking. He also has that exclusive Rokot by Real Steel. But I got the one that he, uh, so I'm looking forward to this new Russian knife coming in. It's got this giant fuller on both sides of the blade. It's kind of a spear, spear point blade, flipper, titanium, all of that, but just a really unique looking blade. And uh, I'm excited about that. But what else? I mean, I want, I want something new. I'm going to get this Nessie. I really like the look of that. And that's three and a half inch blade. So that's, that's coming in right in my front right pocket carry and that's those are the most important uh to me in terms of folders any ideas of what i the crystal you have one on the way awesome that's what it's called crystal like the like the uh the highfalutin uh champagne right uh eat ramen for the trip and use all the money for knives yeah yeah you know what i'm i'm lucky um in that i can go um i can go long periods without eating and not and not care um, if knives are involved, <laughs> no, I mean like, um, you know, uh, I can, I can do, I can travel and kind of force myself to forget about food for a while. And so I think that that's a great idea. Actually, Caleb says, if, if you haven't watched the show, educate, uh, episode from Mark of Mark of the maker podcast. Okay. I think I know what you're saying here. Uh, okay. All right. So that's, that's probably a, a, uh, uh, like a primer, if you will. Nicholas Alvarez, great to have you here. Carrying my Strider SMF aluminum in tiger stripe. Ooh, an XHP steel. Those aluminum ones are very cool with the um, with the chevron pattern in them, I think. Very nice. Moon Pirates carrying his QSP Penguin in S35VN and carbon fiber today. Good to have you here, Moon Pirate. And that sounds awesome. I really like the look of the Penguin, uh, especially the one with the... Um, Denim micarta. Love that. Koenig Arius in the pocket today. Nice. I need to check one out. Okay. I'll, I'll put it that way. If I had my druthers, I would get a Koenig Arius uh, without the flipper. To me, that just looks like something about removing the flipper on that knife just, mm, just completes the design to me. Wugga Wugga. Great to have you here. Hey, knife folks. Carrying my Dustin Turpin Persian flipper. Wow. Nice. And John Lloyd Trapper slip joint today. Very nice, man. Wugga wugga. I, I, I haven't uh, seen much from Dustin Turpin lately, but um, I remember a few years back watching him, uh, um, watching his process on Instagram as he was coming out with this, uh, with a Tanto, I think it was. And he just painstakingly uh, showed every, every step of the way. And excuse me. And it was really, man, I have massive respect for him. Beautiful knives. Mark Herrera, great to have you here. Jim and Bob, how y'all doing? We're doing well. Or you said good evening, but I, I assume that the subtext was how you doing. Uh, let's see. Dave says, bring a lot of Dogecoin and drive a Tesla to the show. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> I need a Tesla. You know, well, for a while here, it was looking like I needed one because we had this gas shortage, but that seems to have evaporated um, as news things do. Monster Racing, always a pleasure. Let's see, Kaiser Aelion and the Victorinox Tinker. What is the Kaiser Aelion? That doesn't even look familiar to me. Is this a new one? Not sure, but you have your Tinker, and so now I can rest easy. Carried my new Vero Isotope, nice, with marble carbon fiber and my Victorinox Spirit multi tool says sct phd great to have you here is that a dog laying on his side looking all cute there or is that a cat i think that was a cat lindy's just carrying my blacked out yojimbo 2 oh just nothing just this old thing blackout yojimbo 2 that's the next yojimbo for me is the blackout i love the way that looks it's like looking at a silhouette of that beautiful knife which has an awesome silhouette blade hobby i've been looking at the new boker smash it on Blade HQ, very tempting. Yes, and very uh, very nicely priced, I have to say. I love the look of that smash. It. And Chuck Gadridis designed that, which uh, I was shocked to learn. It, it Because uh, I, we, I had just finished interviewing him when I found that out. 
and uh, he had showed me, you know, all of these really exotic looking um, uh, decorative artistic uh, automatic knives. One of them is shaped like a marlin. He posted that on Instagram today. Beautiful sculptural work. And then one that looks like an eagle. Again, beautiful sculptural work. with. And then he designed that Smatch It, which is, of course, a, a modern folding take on the, on the gnarly, um, you know, knife from World War II. And just beautiful job. If you want the 125 Ultratech, get there early. So is that going to be a only 125 bucks? I thought the the knife was okay. So now here I'm showing my noobness. I thought that the knife was a an Exoset, and I thought it was like 325 bucks. But do they do an Ultratech every year for 125 bucks, and you just have to get there early? Because I'm getting there Thursday night. So hopefully I can I can swing that. It'd be cool to have a commemorative uh, knife from there. Uh, would like an Arius, but waiting on the release of the Chris Reeve and Kosi and S45 VN. So S45, is it 10 better? Like, like what's the, what's the verdict? I, I haven't an S45 uh, knife in my, in my uh, panoply yet. Uh, Max, great to have you. That dog is cute too. Uh, can't put this Vero isotope down. I hear that, man. I, I do, though I've never held one. Uh, what do you think of the new pocket clip? Assuming you have one. Eric Luther, great to have you here, sir. We're doing great. Sean T., good evening. Sean, good evening to you, sir. Uh, did some disassembly with my Shiro Neon Zero lefty today, but also got the Chavez TAK TAC uh, recently, so I've been carrying those two recently. Is the Chavez TAC, I'm sorry for being... Uh, for not knowing too much about Chavez, but is the TAC the new three inch version? Um, don't they have a, didn't he just come out with a, a small version of his of his stuff? We have James Moore in the, uh, I'm not saying it. Hello, James Moore, great to have you here, sir. Uh, James always has something cool in his pocket. James, let us know what you were carrying today. Mark had his Otter Messer, three rivet. I like the Otter Messer. Uh, I do not have one, but uh, I, I do love the look of it and I, Imagine it works great, just like his, just like John's arc form slim foot flipper that didn't c come out nicely in titanium and my card. I love it. So, let me ask you what happens if you have to puncture something? Is that angle at the very front enough? I was always, I'm always curious about that kind of thing. I don't have any true cleaver like blades that that just don't have a point because I like the I like the point, but I love the way that slim foot looks. Hey, Bob and folks. Hey, Poncho151. Uh, I recently got a K-Bar Big Brother on sale and just cleared a bunch of brush with it. It works. Full-size Adamus in pocket. Nice. Nice on the Adamus. And the Big Brother is pretty cool. It is a, It just looks like a giant K-Bar with a regular K-Bar handle. I love that. Uh, working with pocket carrying my Bastinelli Silence Slim today. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah, Dave texted me, let, let me know he was getting this silence slim, which reminds me a bit of this, like a like a knifey version of this, the Talibang on the wall. Just a beautiful shaped, uh, it's got like a, a weight, a little, like a thin waist, and then it widens out, and then it tapers, but it's all straight on the back. Just beautiful. Evo, uh, and by the way, one of, uh, hang on, before I get to that, one of these for pocket carry might might do you good if you're interested in actually having it clipped. Sorry about that. Uh, Quack said, Evo Typhoon. Been on a, a uh, sharp by design kick lately. That's a good kick to be on. And should another very special one coming in soon. Should have a very couple, special one coming in soon. Hit, you've looked at it. Uh-oh. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Do you, do you have an arch nemesis coming in? If so, that is envy. That is it. Not jealousy. It's straight up envy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Quack, I want you to have that knife. I really do. James says, things are looking up here, Bob. Just received my Sharp by Design Micro Evo and my new Monroe Sigil just shipped. Very nice. It, you've always got something going on. I think everyone here always has something going on. Some making some maneuvers, getting something great in. But uh, that that's a that's a beautiful combination you got right there. Uh, even in even as the uh, sigil is on its way. Number one on my short list right now is the CKF Evo True Grail. 
CKF Evo. Oh, yes, 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 yes. The big one. Uh, I, I mean, I like them both, but definitely the big one. Alex was talking about how um, Alex from, from the Knife Box channel was talking about how um, the little one fits his hand just perfectly. But that, I don't know, that sh shape of that blade, that whole thing just needs to be big, in, in my opinion. Wugga Wugga says, that was a great interview with Chuck. Oh, thank you. I mean, Chuck's a great guy. Uh, and and very interesting stuff. I have a New York special style flipper with green micarta made by him. Very impressive work. New York special. Which one is the New York special? Oh, man. Everything he does is just so cool. And it's all unique. And he'll do like small runs of the same thing like he's doing the Switch Army knife. But uh, everyone is is handmade and just an individual. Andrew says... I have a knife that you would actually love to showcase, but being as it's new, being as new as I am, all I can tell you is that it's a small, very small fixed blade, and it looks 100% custom handmade. Who made it? Hmm. How do I send it to you before you send it right back? Oh, I will send it right back. Well, I'll send it after a week. I'll, I'll give you, <laughs> or you can give me a week with it. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, send me an email. I'll give you my address. I'd love to see it. Um, hopefully I can identify it. And if not, uh, if you don't mind, I would, I would show it off here because actually I've had two, two people respond to my, um, mineral mountain iron or mineral mountain. Um, what is it? Mineral mountain. Um, well, I showed a small, uh, uh fixed blade here with a maker's mark and I just didn't recognize it. And I had two people tell me that that's, that's a mineral mountain. And there are two other words to that knife company um, knife. So there are people out there who know a lot about a, a lot. So we can, we can, we can gather our intelligence together and figure this out, or at least our knowledge of knives and figure this out. Eric says, looking forward to seeing you at play. Eric, I'm looking forward to seeing you. Please introduce yourself. So I know, so I know who you are. Chris finally bought an Orion Solaris. What a cool knife on YouTube the other night or tonight. I think they are long sold out, right? I think so. I think they were kind of sold out in pre-order. Uh, but, you know, if that's the case, I'm sure he's going to come out with more. He's uh, David seems very serious about his business, so I'm, I'm sure he'll have more coming up. Caleb says, every year Microtech does a Blade Show Edition Ultratech for $125. They are first come, first serve, and they are usually really long. There's usually a really long line. The ugly gold exit set is a different thing. Tell us how you really feel, Caleb. Okay, so that microtech. So maybe I'll have to find find that line. I'll just this is good. This is gonna be me the whole time. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, what do I do? Where do I go? Because I mean, I, I won't know where that line is, but I will find it. I'll look for the long line and then I'll I'll get at the back of it. Manny Z, great to have you here, sir. Uh, uh, James, uh, Arias or Nkosi would be no contest for me. Arias all the way. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I, something about that. I don't know if it's the, uh, I don't know if it's the design or, or how much um, praise it's gotten, but something is very compelling about that knife. At first, uh, if it, to me, it was an acquired taste visually. And now it's just kind of uh, the respect I have for that knife after hearing people's opinions of it is just part of what colors how much I, I think it's appealing. Sean T. Uh, yeah, the tack is the latest knife he made, small flipper. I don't know much about Chavez either, but it's the only Chav Chavez with a left-hand pocket clip mount. Oh, nice. Okay. So that is the small one. And I think that design looks really good small. Um, you know, it's, it kind of looks like the, the larger, his larger ones, but something about the way it looks small, uh, really nice. Uh, John, it has a hardy blade and you could definitely slam it through stuff. Well, good because you know, that's, yeah, uh, I'm with you on that. Uh, Ethan says, uh, I'm not sure if I should buy a deep carry pocket clip for my hinderer. I don't know. I don't know. There are certain things you don't mess with as far as I'm concerned. Like, for instance, um, uh, like a strider. Like, I would never replace a strider clip. Uh, not because it's a sacred thing, but just design-wise, it kind of it's already kind of a, I'm going to say it, 
it's already kind of an awkward design. I love the way it looks, feels, and and performs. But let's face it, it is kind of an awkward design, and it and it kind of it, that clip lends itself. So I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, in in terms of the hinderer, uh, that is not an awkward design. But the way it looks with that clip, I don't know. You're like, yeah, but it's not all about looks, Bob. And I'm like, mostly not. Incognito says, I wish I can go to Blade Show and buy the Griffiths Bowie from Condor. Ooh, Griffiths Bowie. I don't think I know which one that is. I do love Condor and I do love a Bowie. Are you planning a Blade Show Knife Junkie meetup on Saturday? Uh, no, actually, I was not. But uh, I, I think that that, that should happen. Uh, someone else just suggested Friday. Someone else said Saturday. Or you just said Saturday, but I, I am going to be there both nights and uh, I'm going to go to that area they call the pit <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to hang out there. So I would love to meet people there. Uh, hit the thumbs up for Bob and Jim, ladies and gents. Yes, please do hit the like button. Hit that like button. Also, sharing is a good thing to do, too. If you think that this stuff is worth sharing, um, you know, send it to someone who might not have watched it. Send them the link. They will see it. They will watch it. They will say, hmm, maybe I should send this to John. He seems to be a knife junkie, and then he will send it to John. John will send it to Jane. Jane will send it to Bethany. Bethany will send it to, you know, Derek. And before you know it, I'll be on top of the world. No, please, share, like, thank you. Subscribe also if you're not subscribed. Because uh, really, it'd be ridiculous if you didn't subscribe or hit the notification bell. Uh, wouldn't recommend an aftermarket deep carry clip for a hinderer. Everyone I've tried just can't replicate the feel function of, uh, of the original note fit into slot as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. None fit into the slot as well. Like that's, that's, that's another thing. Also like, uh, I was carrying this today. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change the clip on the Sabenza either. Um, not that, not that it's that, I'm starting to veer away a little bit from the deep carry clips. Um, not that I'm, no, I shouldn't say that. But my preference is no longer that strongly with a deep carry clip. Just uh, just as long as it's not audaciously high up, like some Emersons can be just ridiculously high up. This one really did need it. Shanti, Ethan, I have a deep carry clip on my ZT0560. And I feel like the knife is too heavy for a deep carry. Oh, interesting because it car it's carrying too low, and it seems the pocket starts folding. Not sure how it would be with the hinderer, though. That is interesting. That is, uh, Sean, uh, that's, you're, you're, you're voicing an unspoken observation. Sometimes I notice that, and, and I didn't really think to put together why that is, but I think you may be onto something there, sir. Hot topic, best clip ever. Answer, sharp by design, void XL. Really? So why, James, why? Since you brought up the hot topic, I want your hot take on why um, why that's the best carry, uh, deep carry pocket clip, or best pocket clip at all. We have Ben. How are you, Ben? I'm great, Bob. How are you? I'm doing well, man. I, I don't know. For some reason, I keep fighting the urge to say in the house, <laughs> and I just did it right there. It's great to have you here, Ben. Of course, you know Ben as the proprietor of Jack Wolf Knives, and Blade Show next week will be his his material debut, meaning that's the first time most people are going to get a chance to actually hold his knives and see them in person. Indeed, going out or coming out big. I coming think. out big. Uh, hang yeah. on one sec. Oh, wait, wait. I just wanted to read that last. Uh, my parents are from El Salvador, so I have a few Condor knives and a lot of uh, in my, uh, oh, Imacasa machetes. Oh, sweet. Yeah, everyone in um, El Salvador, there are a lot of machetes down in El Salvador. Uh, my father went there on a, on, a, on a trip and said that, yeah, you love it down there. Everyone has a machete. Uh, Quack, I used, to, I used to exclusively prefer deep carry, but I really like how non-deep carry clips show off the hardware like Hinderer. Yes, indeed. I, well, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind walking around with a machete. I, I don't need it for work, though, so I couldn't really justify it. Beg knives have the best clips with the little ball, I think. So, Ben, how's the world treating you, sir? Are you getting excited for Blade? Uh, extremely excited for Blade. And um, can I just plug your join link? 
maybe someone wants to come up with us. Yeah, please. Yeah, guys. Uh, you know, if you got something new in the mail or you want to show us what you've been carrying, it's always, I think, real fun to see some of you guys face to face here on Bob's show. So the knifejunkie.com slash join. Make sure your camera and your microphone are working. There's some settings there. Throw in some buds or some muffs. And put some, come put hang some out. light, yeah. Put some light on you, and and uh, make sure that uh, no one's screaming in the background. But if they are, hey, we can deal with that too. You know, right? We'll we'll cope. Yeah, we all we all swim in the same waters. So, uh, what what kind of prep are you doing right now, man? So a lot of it, you know, talking about being a noob, right? Like I've never been to the Blade Show as a spectator, especially as an exhibitor, <clears throat> and my original plan was just like, take what I could bring with me on the plane, but that has morphed into something bigger and I think better. So, you know, I outgrew carrying stuff on the plane. I had to learn how transport and material handling works at trade shows. There's like union labor agreements. Oh, so wow. yeah, you yeah, can't, yeah. you know, you can't like drop off your own stuff in all circumstances. So there is a learning curve there for me. Um, I'm sure for some of you guys, it's an old hat, you know, you know, the trade show circuit, but it's new to me. Um, but I was able to get a bunch of stuff on a pallet and that left Tuesday. And then I have some more stuff. I don't want to kind of reveal it cause it's a surprise for the show, but I put something together and I'm sending that stuff by, uh, like UPS and that's getting delivered to my hotel. And so I'll be able to bring that in. You can like walk in a box, but that's about all you can do without paying the union. Oh, oh man, that's interesting. Was yep. it the Teamsters? <laughs> I don't really know. Like there's this uh, outfit called Freeman that seems to like monopolize the trade show material handling and freight transportation for these things. They're like some giant. You can rent booth furniture from him or all the booth accoutrement you could possibly need. <clears throat> but um, I was able to like, through them, book the round trip freight for my pallet and the handling charges to get stuff from their warehouse to my table. So it's really a lot of hands off, which I prefer with the, you know, injured shoulder, like the less I got to schlep, yeah, the yeah. better for me. Yeah, well, not only that, but you you don't want to be you want your head in the game. You don't want to be worried too much about schlepping and you know that whole thing. You want to be right thinking about what you're, you know, how you're going to be greeting the public. Right. I want to get so the setup is a little behind the scenes info, I suppose. Like the setup is Thursday, so as an exhibitor, they let you get in there Thursday. I think from like nine to seven or something like that. You get to set up your table. You can also do a little setup on Friday, but you got to be done by a certain time on Friday. That's the rule because everybody starts rolling in there. Right. Um, but my goal would be Thursday, like get all my stuff set up as quickly as possible and then use the rest of Thursday to socialize with other knife makers, material suppliers, dealers, like kind of that uh, behind the scenes industry opportunity. Yeah. And like you said, if I burden myself with too much you know manual labor or logistical headache mm. i would potentially miss that opportunity so i think i'm prepared to make the most of it yeah that seems like a great time to press the flesh and to and to well do your networking because when the show opens up uh it's going to be a different story john says the freeman group it's a nightmare we would bribe slash tip them <laughs> at the KBIS show every year just to keep our cabinets from getting from being destroyed. What's KBIS? That is interesting. So wow, man, Freeman mean uh, being kind of a uh, an ironic name. <laughs> if you're going to Blade <laughs> Show and you like traditional knives with modern materials, Ben's Jack Wolf knives are highly recommended. Show Thank off, you, man. Yeah, show off uh, the uh, the one you were showing off today. Hey, James, so, great to have you here, sir. Um, so the one I posted the pictures of on Instagram, that's the vampire okay. Jack. And that's the one with the center swells. But the one I was carrying today is the one that you had your eye on, Bob, oh, originally. Yeah. Yes. Let me uh, try to get this. That's the Warncliffe blade with the with – the, with the handle that curves so nicely international kitchen and bath show 
Oh man, yeah, they'll just destroy your stuff, I guess. I always yeah. struggle getting this thing to focus, but I think you kind of get the idea. Hey, Lefty, good to have you here, sir. And Jim behind the switcher. It's great to have you, Lefty. Look at that. Oh, God. That is nice. Hey, what's up, Brent? Super comfortable to, to handle. Like, there's just something about that subtle, you know, kind of yeah. just gets right in there. That the swelling um, at the back, that's what really drew me to that design. Yeah. I was surprised at how ergonomic it really came out to be. You know what I mean? It kind of exceeded my expectation. And um, I try to set the bar high for myself, but, you know, very, I'm, I'm, I like it. I can't wait to see what you guys think of these things. You know, oh, please come by my table, 16C, say what's up, to have some good conversation. Give me your super honest, unfiltered opinion of these things. Like, that's why I'm spending the money to be there so I can get the best feedback possible on these prototypes. Nice. BD, great to have you here. Pena Apache inbound knife center exclusive. Uh, ben has quite the Pena uh, uh, collection, right? Yeah, I have uh, several slip joints. He never makes any left-handed locking knives, so I don't own any of those. I've handled his X series before and they're amazing. And I think the one he just referred to is an X series drop that just happened maybe. Um, Cause he's dribbled out a few of those recently and they just look so good. Oh man, look at this. Here's a, here's a beautiful compliment. Sean C says, I never knew how much I wanted a few traditional knives until I looked at Ben's website. Um, -ah. That's like <laughs> what yeah. I, I love hearing that. I, Draw know, them in more than anything. I, I would love to convert some of you dudes who have the sick modern knife collections into, you know, one or two. Just start with one or two. See what you think about having a slip joint. It's such a nice compliment to your collection. And I'm hoping that the titanium, the M390, the hollow grind, all those things maybe are a little more attractive than something that's uber traditional. To me, the hollow grind, I mean – that just takes the cake. I also love the integral bolster liner uh, idea, um, but 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 to me, like the real, the designs are beautiful. So you know, I, I'm a I'm a very visual. <laughs> I judge knives visually uh, a lot, but but in terms of performance, that the whole um, hollow ground thing just has me has me by the short and curlies uh what pivot system should i use for a hinderer since i'm not going to the navy should i buy ceramic bearings i mean i'm sorry since i'm going into the navy should i buy ceramic bearings huh huh hey brent great to have you here sir what's do, up do, and to do, answer ne ethan's question yes i was gonna say do you have any uh thoughts i on will that? say yes you should get ceramic because if you're going in the navy there's a lot of there's a lot of like whatever you're doing down there, you're going to get a lot of crap in that, in that bearing. So I would stick with Foster's bronze if you're going to do that, but that's your decision. You know, there's also, there's also the Nylatron, right? That should be somewhat impervious to, uh, yes. To self lubricating. Uh, yeah. And, and also beware, you're going to be seeing UAPs all the time. Apparently, uh, John says, cannot wait to see them. They are awesome on Instagram, and I know they are better in the flesh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. The trader with his trade here. Is that the <laughs> mistress? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <he has. laughs> Look no, at that I, thing. Oh, that's your, so that's your reason, side piece. So, so the reason <laughs> I did a name change and all of this stuff is because I want to go. I'm going back to my old days where I used to review random knives over the years, um, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing my revisit series, which I don't know, Bob, if you're if you watch it or not. Yep. But uh, I'm still doing that. But I'm like, you know what? I'm really want to go back to the old days where I reviewed like knives that I've not had yet, and a uh, Jake Hoback is well on my list for a long time, and I've been wanting one. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let's let's see that. Let's just see the spine of that. Open yeah, it up. I was and... gonna say the same thing. Yeah, wow, you want to see the spine? The... <laughs> Jesus, that Man. is a thick boy. Whoa, my God! <clears throat> so wait, so that's uh, that's three quarter. Of a... Wait, wait, no. I mean, yeah, that's no, three quarters of an inch thick. The whole thing. Uh, the blade is zero point twenty five thou. Um, it's right. 
So that's a quarter. It's, more, it's it's pretty yeah. It's a quarter inch thick steel, but it's um, Nitro V. My first time using Nitro V. Um, it cuts wondrously. <laughs> Jeez. Yes, yes, I become different ones, different days. Like next thing you know, I'll have a spark blade. Next thing you know, I'll have something else. What does BRB mean? BRB. Be right back. Oh, be right back. Right. Okay. Buying ceramic bearings. All right, cool. <laughs> taking taking the word of knives collector now. Knives collector. And plus using Jay Kovac's uh bearing um Good God, decent system man. first time, which is awesome. What what differentiates that from your average detent system? You know, in in a sense of had my first time trying it and all that, it, it's really cool because I like my my bearings like a little little more. Um, it don't it will not come out. Gotcha. I like it. I like it strong. Is you that know? a hollow ground blade? Being so thick like that, but uh, I don't think so. It looks flat. Hey, yeah, uh, it's, like, it's a zero grinds pretty much, but he does a oh. second bevel on it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I hey, don't know. Caleb, you have a Kirby Lambert, don't you? Or do you have a couple? I love his knives. I, I didn't know he won't. Oh, I think I did see that. That he won't be a blade. Uh, man, that's too bad because that's the only way I'm ever going to get to hold a, a Kirby Lambert is standing at his table. Quack says, how does Hoback rolling detent feel, Brant? Well, right now it's like it's weird how this texture is on here. They're they're acid washed because it feels like a custom because that sound that it, it makes. Yeah, but it's really good. I mean, God, I I want that knife. God, that's really cool. Hey, the only place you can get it is Knifeworks. You can get it in Knifeworks or Blade HQ. The one I have is sold out. The this Lambert version. Snap. Okay. But um, they had the brand. They had the natural one too. Um, for five seventy five. What's natural about it? Well, I mean, there's a brown, and then there's natural. Like it's just all oh, green. It's green. This is brown when it turns. When it's going to turn different. Oh, colors. okay. That's my carta. Okay, I wasn't sure what that yeah. material was. Okay. Hey, uh, wait. Let me let me show you guys since I have you assembled here, and I I like your opinion. Mm -hmm. See this? This is a knife sent to me by a, a gentleman in Newfoundland, uh, and he started a company called uh, the Newfoundland Knife Company. Holy mackerel, that's nice. Looks like and, a bussy kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it kind of does. It's pretty. It's thinner though than what I imagine. And he had it made by Millet. You know, we know Millet out, out in Idaho. It's uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was a, a couple of guys or a guy, and uh, uh, who who used to work at Chris Reeve Knives, and they started an OEM called Millet, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where this one is made. And uh, this gentleman reached out to me. His name is uh, Jonathan Stiles, and he's got a, a company up there, and, and they do other kind of outdoor stuff. But and this is his first uh, foray into into knives, and uh, he uh, this one is cerakoted in red, as you can see. But there's also like a natural steel color one, and there's also a uh, uh, a black one. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys. I'm going to do a, a, a review of this, but it's pretty interesting what do you guys think i like, I like it cool. yeah it's it's an eighth of an inch thick looks like something darth maul would carry that's funny <laughs> yeah the red i gotta say the red was a, a little bit arresting i saw it i was like oh, red knife oh <laughs> but uh it's a really it's got it seems to have really nice geometry and i can't tell i haven't i haven't really I just got it, so I haven't had a chance to really look look into it too much. I think it's hollow ground, but it's an eighth of an inch thick and pretty broad, so that it's super like sharp and slicey. Now, for an outdoor knife, I don't know if it needs to be thicker. I, I don't think so. I mean, unless you're going to be prying with it, in which case you got the wrong tool in your hand. Uh, but yeah, I just I just think it's really cool and unique. And he was saying. Um, Next time. Oh, damn sad. I got to go. Oh, well, Jan, it's been a pleasure, sir, as it was last week. Have a have a great one. And uh, and, you know, take care of that business and then come back and join us next week. Um, but it's very comfortable in the hand, man. Looks man. like it. Yeah. I like the eighth inch stock. I have really grown to appreciate 
thinner blade stock, which is just always going to mean thinner behind the edge, you know, generally speaking, mm -hmm. and like a little less sort of uh, like dead weight, that feeling of dead weight in your hand. That's personal preference for me, but I think you can do everything you need to do, generally speaking, with like an eighth inch stock. So yeah. that appeals to me. I like, from what I understand, like I know Millet does pocket clips for Chris Reeve and people like are stoked on those. Yeah. So I think they have a reputation for quality. <clears throat> and I like the, I like the way it looks that handle looks like you could work with it all day long. Yes. Um, yes, you could. Yeah. And uh, that swooping blade grind looks, I mean, it looks like a useful practical knife. I, I suppose if it's bright red like that, you know, if you drop it, it's easy to see it. Yes. or something I mean, it probably has some practical benefit as it's different from just being aesthetically different right uh i i have one uh this is probably when i when i review this i am not going to use it this is not my knife um and by the way it comes in a in a, a full grain super stout leather sheath uh, i also saw from his website he's doing kydex uh, a lot of different styles of kydex uh, sheath that he's making himself but this is the one that comes with the knife um, but, uh, w the one thing, um, Andrew, if you're still watching, uh, send me an email at the knife junkie.com slash Gmail. Um, so that I don't forget, cause I would like to check out that knife and, uh, have it for a week and send it back. Um, here, he's got this lanyard hole here. Um, and I like forward lanyard holes, but there isn't one back here. And this is one thing that uh, I think it would benefit from because uh, I know that you can use a lanyard in the forward position just fine. But I also like one in the back because of the option of making a um, sort of something that comes across the back of your hand. Not that I've ever used that, but I love the idea of it. You know, when you have a lanyard hole here and here and then you and then you create a... Uh, um, a way to kind of keep it in your hand if you're using your fingers for other stuff or um you know if you really don't want that thing to come out of your hand i know a lot of a uh, sort of self defense knives do that so that you know no matter how bad the fight gets it's not coming out so just uh just a curiosity you know or not a curiosity just a a, a preference i would want uh, one right there too wait what did patty say i miss, i mean what did steven say i missed that hi ben i agree with the thinner blade stock i think if folks tried the hinderer slippy, I believe they would be converted. Interesting. I have not, and I know, I know Brant would agree with you hundred percent, but I have not. Hey, Caleb, nice, right to put a, <laughs> nice to put a face to a name, sir. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Here's a, uh, here's that Kirby Lambert. It's a little bit oh, dirty. <laughs> good Lord. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful, man. How I does it, I was hoping to get on a lotto this year, maybe get a little bit fancier one. I don't have any of the fancy steel or anything on it. So uh, how do you, how does it perform? I mean, I know it looks good. How does it, uh, how does it feel? It's, it's very thick. It feels really good at hand, but uh, it gets really thin behind the edge. Nice. Hey, uh, Quack just said that he saw someone prying with a, with, with a Sabenza and, uh, he says uh, uh, often people underestimate how robust steel is. Yeah, and and flexible. It should be flexible somewhat too. Caleb, what what were you carrying today? I think you mentioned it before, but I, I now I can't remember. At the subvert. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the in the orange. Orange subvert. pioneer. So was that on purpose? Uh, kind of. <laughs> well, yeah, it had to be. Nothing had wrong with be. that. Nothing wrong with that. That's I respect it. You see. I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> cool anything new uh in your collection caleb i've just bought one knife this year that i can remember and that's really uh, squid industries oh man that's Crake. beautiful oh what is that Crake. it's like a crake raking i think okay oh my god that's gorgeous i love that uh that tanto blade was that a child or was that a cat i heard that was a cat okay <laughs> uh oh uh oh no nice. uh oh no Cramp i did not break up, up with rick, rick. <laughs> I'm, I'm still good with rick and all of that 
I have the master. You're you're putting a lot of pressure on the guy. He's like, oh my God, what am I going to come out with next? He needs to buy someone else's knife. And you did. You did him a favor. Sorry, Jim. What did that say? Mm -hmm. Hollywood Tactical says, I have the mass drop Perpetua from Millet Knives. It's awesome. Yeah, the Perpetua, uh, that's a cool looking knife too. That that was a that was a uh, a uh, 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 a couple of years ago uh, that came out. Uh, they do a lot of his knives, um, TJ um, Schwartz, TJ Schwartz. So, you know, he's everywhere, actually. But he designed a, a number of the knives that Millet has come out with. Uh, the Torrent, uh, I believe he did that. And and there's a Sierra KT version of that, right? And uh, they just recently did a run of his Overland, which I think is a beautiful knife, uh, but made by Millet, even better. Caleb, what... Uh, how many knives would you say you have in your collection? I, I, I'm curious if you I'm had to count. To count them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. We all are. <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, so what's your favorite? What's your prized? Uh, I'd say the orbit. Oh, that's sweet. It took me a while to find this one. That is a sweet, that, that's a surge, right? Yeah, it's a Serge and uh, Brent and Gavin Hawk collab. Oh, right, right. So that's kind of a bit of a unicorn, right? Oh yeah, they're 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 pretty tricky to track down. People that have them don't want to get rid of them. Right. Oh yeah, yeah hey Bob, you want to know something? I got a list of knives I gotta get. Oh well, let's hear it because I don't think I can read it. Uh, I got Microtech, Spartan Blades, CRKTs, Chris Reeve, Bark, Rivers Knives, Browse Blades, Chavez. Oh. Giant <laughs> pool, Curtis, giant okay. mouse. You know what? On. It, I got three pages of this. Okay, so so this this is reminding. <laughs> oh, Brick got a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so this list that this now growing list reminds me of. Um, see, how do I put this? Well, it's like when someone first experiences something that that was forbidden, and then they're just like, okay. Now that I've experienced it, I'm going all in. And now you have this, this list. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm going through it, and I'm, I see Conan knives. I never owned a Conan knife, and Conan I'd knife. love to. Oh, do you mean Koenig? Yes. Oh, oh, I thought you said Conan, and I was like, I want oh. a Conan knife, too. Here, so Spartan Blades. Here, I happen to have one right here. I actually have two of them. But I, I like I, the Bill Harsey, the ones. Yeah, the, oh! These are both Bill Harsey. So the, the, the Spartan Harzy uh, dagger, which nice. is just perfection. I mean, it's I love just, that dagger, man. That's a cool looking freaking dagger. It is incredible. And wow. if you if you get it, you have to uh, you have to get it with the um, Chattanooga Leatherworks uh, sheath. Ooh. What do you what do you have there, knife start? Or uh, what do you have there, Caleb? That's a EOS Thresher. Ooh, that's that's nice. a dagger they make. Oh, that is lovely. That's nice. They do. Uh, I think it's aluminum on the handles. I don't think it's tight. It's not heavy enough. But uh, they're they're pretty neat. They don't. I don't see these around very often. They make, mm. but they've got them in stock everywhere. I like short. Oh, do they? EOS Thresher, you say? I yeah, should write they, this down. My old man brain will forget EOS Thresher. Yeah, here's a little tiny one for you. Oh yeah, that's on my keychain. <laughs> it's Except my unboxing knife. Dagger. Yeah, I got, I got one of those too. Hey, uh, so Brent, this is also right up your alley. Uh, the the uh, the Spartan Hersey folder. They're now being made in S forty five VN. This is in, yeah S thirty five, and uh, I've been wanting to try the S forty five VN. Now this this is a great knife. I gotta say. Uh, I agree with uh, Stasa. This, the one thing I would change here is, I would just yeah, I would just do that. I I, I agree with Stasa too. In Metal Complex and maybe a few other people because they need to. They I'm glad they made an upgraded version, a three inch version. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty nice. And sorry for my excitement because it's it's very exciting for me to see knives. 
Oh, no. It's, it's, what do you mean? What do you talk about? You mean other knives? Yes, because I usually look up hinder only but hinder like for months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is so you're in that that sweet period after the breakup where you're just like, <laughs> okay, we know you didn't break up, but where you're just like, oh man, no, I've had no. my eye on Kate. No, I, I I've still had talk my to Rick. On. I still talk to Marsha. Um, <laughs> Marsha. He's at the club, just like hey, Baldy. Around. Good to have you here. First time watcher. Who do you think does the best out of the box edge consistently? That's a great question. Any answers, gents? Any any uh, any ideas? I, I have to say, uh, Microtech really like. I'm always shocked at how sharp Microtech knives are. Um, I don't own one, so I don't know. Oh, I bet I bet they're on the list. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, they are, and I'm very picky of what I want because I want the Trodon, the Combat Trodon. I have the little Troodon. I bought thinking it was the combat Troodon, but still, it's an amazing. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would say. Oh, man. I would is say that Microtech. The, is that the man, Halo? They, they yeah, have it's, a, it's a Halo stick. Oh, one of my holy grails. You got to get the one without the safety, though. <laughs> Jeez, man. I love it. I love it. I was this close to buying one years ago, and I was like, oh. But you didn't. What What do you think? Uh, besides Jack Wolf knives, who do you think has the best edge? Riot also, man, their edges are always amazing. I was really impressed with the edge on these prototypes. I'll be curious to see what you guys think. And you know, I can't complain about a Chris Reeve factory edge. Um, oh. They're they're sharp. Um, I I don't own enough brands to really say with anything definitive. I can say I've been unsatisfied with a Benchmade Edge before Man. on a knife I bought. Spyderco <laughs> is always incredibly sharp. Cold yeah, Steel is always incredibly good. sharp. I know, uh, you know, not not everyone is into either of those brands, but yeah, Cold Steel, more a knife, definitely. I like Protec Edges. They've they've been yeah. good. Yeah, and Protec. Ooh, that's a nice one, man. Oh, that's in your uh, that's in your um, logo. Right in your Caleb. Uh, that, oh yeah, that, yeah, that's it. That ProTech in particular is like sitting right. What was that last one by Stephen by Patty right there? He said Mora. Hogue. Oh Mora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hogue. Hogue also puts a great edge. Mora knives, wicked sharp. Yeah, they are gonna... with that Scandi grind, man. Like you can get those Scandi grinds like so freaking sharp. They feel like they're sticky. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, I think Quack before said that the Spartan Harzies uh, he's heard are like a combination of uh, the Chris Reeve and, you know, like the Sabenza and the Hinderer. And I would agree with you uh, completely that this knife is very much like that. Really does have that feel. Oh, that's that special. Is that the moon landing one? Nope. Actually, this is the Tiger Eyes version. This is a very rare Tiger Eyes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. With a unique graphic or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, it's one of the unique graphics. You usually go way in the rabbit hole collecting Chris Reed when you start chasing unique oh, yeah. graphics or chasing birthdays. I actually got that for my birthday like five years ago. <laughs> So my my Chris Reeve, my one Chris Reeve knife is the Sabenza I was carrying today was made on Leap Day 2016. So Ooh. so this only has a birthday every four years, which I think is kind of a cool little uh, cool little That's detail, cool. you know? That's cool. Yeah. And then of course, if you're if you get into fixed blades at all, you should you should hunt down a Randall knife. I mean, oh, these yeah. things, Randall made knives are just so sweet. This is the 16 Special Fighter. 16 meaning it has the the number one style blade and the number 14 style handle cool. and, uh, oh god this thing is oh actually it's the number 16 style handle because uh it uh, it also has the grooves which is a i think it was a diver's knife originally but they put the number one blade on it which is the classic um i want and, the pilot's knife yes the pilot's knife is cool i think that's a 14 right yeah i think so yeah um it's just just cool and and if you're if you're someone who has to have super steel on all of your knives you know they're not for you because they still make them out of 440c but you know they worked for the 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 real men who fought in world war ii you know what i'm saying not that i'm not calling us real men but i mean they were you know they got along just fine with 440 baldy says interesting i agree with mora not zt though i've recently uh, I've received dull knives from them before, like the 0562. 
dull. Interesting. So question for you, Baldy. Uh, dull at the edge? This I'm not sure if I'm asking the question right, but dull at the edge or dull behind the edge? Like too thick behind the edge? Because uh, I had a 0562 and it was sharp, like on paper, so to speak, but not so slicey. I'm not sure if that was the great the the blade grind and the five six two is is the slicer grind. So you'd think, I don't know, but I that's interesting because all of my ZTs have mine. been very sharp. What's that, Caleb? I have the same problem with mine. It's it's just too thick behind the edge. It seems. Oh yeah. Same that's, with the fifty five. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the, you mean the 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 Chichini one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my! Okay, I I recently, you know, I have that same one. Yeah, mine was was pretty darn sharp. Here's yeah, one. Well. Here's one that came really, really, really sharp. Uh, this is the uh, the Riot K2. I think Knife Joker still has these in different uh, different handles, but this is that very nice thin hollow grind and just sharp as hell, man. I mean, this knife is just really, really, really sharp and beautifully produced, too. I mean, they did a great job on this. What about this one, Bob? Oh, I like that. Is that the Hisatsu? What do they call that uh, one? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, no, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's the Higo no Kami. Yes. <laughs> that is a cool knife, man. I really like that. This That's was actually cool. a, a pretty much back pocket knife because it, it takes a lot of wear and tear over time, but. Uh, it's, it's John, a, great it's a, a Williams design, right? William, um, I can't remember his first name, but he's a he's a Japanese. Uh, he's specialized. Oh, that's a Diskin, right? Yeah, this it's, is a, a Kaiser Diskin. I'm like just I'm like a dog. Ooh, something flashy, and I, I <laughs> stop mid sentence. Jeez, man, TRM knives. Yes, TRM knives always come super sharp. At least. That's what I've heard. I only have one TRM, and it is extremely sharp, but they're hard to come by, right? Or am I wrong? <laughs> are they not? Hard to, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think they are. I think they're hard to come by, but but maybe it was just hard for me to come by. Um, the Adam, what's that? That's this is, is that an old Almar or something? This is a very old Almar, and believe it or not, I looked it up. What these what. This was for the Secret Service back in the 90s. They used really? it. Yeah. And I found this in a pawn shop and I oh, bought shit. it. In, what's like, what's the uh, part, the piece on the tail end on the pommel there? I don't really know. I just saw it and I was like, eh, that's kind of cool. I mean, Is it a bail? I mean, are you supposed I, to attach yeah, something I don't to it? Know. Or? I don't know. I mean, I, it's called the Secret Agent, so I don't know what it's for. The Secret Agent. It's I think good. Kershaw has yeah. one called. I don't know what. <laughs> Caleb, what's your most uh, unique? And uh, I mean, you showed us what what your prized, your most prized one is, but yeah, Quack TRMs are always out of stock, right? Here's a one off from uh, uh, what's his name? R is Rooster that Ro Rooster? Oh yeah, it's a Rooster yeah. Fish. Damn, look at that! It's green on that side, blue on that one. Wow, it that that blade is crazy. I don't see this. You don't see these a bit too often out there anymore. Nope. And Roosterfish is not like a huge brand. No, he's it's like a, not something you see too often. He's a fellow Tennessean. I know that because I've met him up at uh, Knifeworks a few times when they do their uh, rep week. Nice. Is he still doing stuff? Still making stuff? Yeah, he's got a. He was putting a Bali up on Instagram that he's bringing to Blade Show. Nice. So wait, uh, I saw you just had two seventy ones up. Yeah, this is the new release. <clears throat> These two. Beautiful. So that's red, but what's the other one? Is the other one green? I can't quite tell. Yeah, it's way. like almost like a like a forest green this time around. So a little bit of blue in there, a little more blue than than oak. Yeah, maybe. yeah, more like a green black as opposed to like a green olive. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Nice. And and what do you have there, Brent? This is a Kershaw. Um, I forgot the name of it, but it has a Samai Damascus blade in. You can't even tell. It's oh, so wow. Shiny, but yeah. That's how Kershaw started making knives like that. 
Yeah, and then I found this actually at House of Blades when there's discounts. So it's flip joint? Nope, it's actually is it's a liner lock. It's okay. It's a cool liner lock that you can literally lock. So what do you think of the new run of 71, of the bull nose, or bull bust? What is that, the bull nose or the bull buster? This is a bull nose. What, what do you think of that run? I think they did a great job with it, honestly. Like, the spring, the fit and finish, the, you know, everything. The tip isn't proud. Everything's centered. It's got a nice stout spring. Maybe too much for some, but, like, the nature of this knife. This is a working knife, so yeah, I, yeah. I can see that. And these are just cool. You've commented on it before, the rivet. Yeah. Um, you know, they're nice and thick. Yeah in this dimension so <clears throat> i love these I, I think this is a 100 percent classic slip joint pattern that if you ever want to try out a slip joint is a great one to just grab and see what you think like a knife you could leave in your garage to you know whatever you need it, whatever you need it for maybe a little big and bulky to carry compared to some other slip joint options mm -hmm. yeah um still probably quite spelt compared to a lot of modern knives right yeah but but really reasonably priced. I mean, some dealers had these for like 60 bucks or 62 nice. bucks. It was crazy. Um, and, and some as high as 90, which was the MSRP. But I don't think you can go wrong at either price, truthfully. And a uh, thing I really like about that model and a couple of others, like the 47 and also the 23, um, the big version of that knife, is I like lanyard holes on, yeah. on slip joints, especially workers, because that one's going to sit in the back pocket. You know what I mean? You could put that in the back pocket with a little fob and it'll stand up, you know, it'll it'll stay the way you want it because of tension from the from the little lanyard, you know what I mean? Indeed. Oh, you got a classic right there. Yeah, I do. It's a classic cold steel Voyager. Well, modified by me because it had all serrated, but I took it off. Nice. Well, it just so happens that tonight in my state of the collection, uh, uh, I've been doing oldies but goodies because I haven't been getting a lot of new knives recently. And my oldie but goodie is also an old Voyager. Look at this. Look at this. Sucker. Oh, Here, me, dang. You did some modifications on yours. No, the only thing I did was put skateboard tape on it. Just, Where can uh, you find it? Uh, at a skateboard shop. It's just okay. basically, it comes in sheets. It comes in sheets like uh, contact paper. Uh, okay. Like the kind of stuff you put on drawers, like it's big. And you I just kind of never find any of that. I went to Walmart one day and I was like, okay, maybe Walmart may have it. Nope, they don't. <laughs> no, I I got mine at uh, a skate shop at our you know, local mall. At the mall, I went down the mall. Uh, so this <laughs> is uh, one of these old uh, ones with the integral grivery clips. This this was for a long time my sharpest knife. I mean, uh, I got this, believe it or not, in a store in in times square back when well i guess i guess new york city has teeth again but not the kind of teeth you want <laughs> but uh, uh when i lived there when i first moved there there was a great martial arts store i talk about it all the time it comes up it was called roseland martial arts it it uh, was owned by this woman rose and her husband and they sold all sorts of martial arts stuff but the cool thing about it was they had a uh, a, a knife case that was i don't know 50 feet long and it was full of knives and some some gas station knives and some you know whatever but they had tons of cold steels and bench maids and i just walked into a store in Times square and bought this and for a long time this sucker look at this hollow ground thing Ooh, that's a yeah. buoy style too that's nice yep. yeah yeah and with that handle shape it's sort of evocative of a like a a, a navaja something so yeah, it that's what it does. Yeah. It's about as old school as I get. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Talar. Ooh, the Talar. That's a nice one. Can you hold that back up? Yeah, I I used to have one. I got rid of it. Now I just I regret that because I love that knife. That was the first knife I'd ever bought that was above like thirty dollars, I think. Oh yeah? I, I would look at it in the ninth grade back in high school. Like, I got to have one of those. That's so expensive. I can't imagine paying that much for a knife. Yeah. And f uh, flash forward however many years it's been, and boom, man, you've got a sweet collection, as Monster's saying. 
uh, any skate shop will have grip tape. Yeah. Uh, the, um, so I don't know if you heard that brand, but yeah, any, any yeah. place will have it. Uh, that, uh, the Talwar is an extremely thin and slicey knife. Um, at least the four inch version, which is the one I had just really, really, really sharp. Ooh, what's that? So this is a tool that Pina came out with recently pocket pry mm. um made by riot has a clip designed by javi garcia who's a friend of mine and uh talked about him before he makes really awesome custom leather but he's also training oh, yeah. to be a custom knife maker <clears throat> and him and enrique kind of collabed on this they did od they did natural and they did moku tai if i said that right so that uh that is a little piece of uh, micarta on there yeah, it's a piece of micarta, okay, really so milled, really, really well, and it's M three ninety. This thing, wow. Um, so it's interesting. I don't, you know, for what I do day to day, I don't really have much use for these, to be completely honest. Um, but I just like to support these guys. They, you know, they mean a lot to me. Their friendship. So I, I do what I can to support both of them. Um, but it's super funky and really cool. And if I did need to pry and work off screws and bolts and stuff, I'm sure it'd be plenty useful. Uh, Michael says you can get grip tape at Home Depot or Lowe's in a roll. It's cheaper. Oh, yeah, for like stairs and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Basement stairs and such. Uh, ben, that looks like something you could put on your keychain and leave on there and have it weather nicely. I mean, you might not want to do that, but... Um, like if you have no use for it, you might find a use for it once it's on your keychain. Right. You know, maybe a little hefty for the keychain, uh, you know, just floating around in the bottom of your pocket. I, I wouldn't, I'd look for something a little smaller. Yeah. Now, rem if you remember last week or the week before I showed that one yeah. with the skull logo on it, that yeah. one's better for the keychain. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one, given the pocket clip, I think this one fits, you know, neatly on, you know, on your other side of your knife or any other pocket. Right, right. Um, but for me, it's a souvenir, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-oh. Is that a CQC-15 I see? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. He's stepping out hard now. Hey, Hero Sticks. Great to have is, you. This is from my collection. <laughs> Wait, let me see that. I, I, I'm a big fan. Is that a super? No, it's not a super. It's just a plain Jane. It's the regular. Size. Nice. That is a great knife. I, I do it like is. the... I do like the combination of the of the CQC seven tip and the and the commander. Oh, um, a bit bigger. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, Brant, keep that out because I want to talk about that. But, but Caleb, this knife I love. This is a this is a Daraspina design, right? Uh, um, Zabo. Zabo. Okay. I always yeah, mix them up in my mind, but hold that back up. This I lusted for this thing, and when it came out, uh, I just. I was not spending that money on knives and um, oh my God, that is cool, man. That is a great one to, to have. That's just like all tactical. And, and with, <laughs> with the, with that um, compression lock, doesn't it, doesn't it kind of slow itself down or something? Doesn't it have a, it's, it has a spring instead of a DT and it's very weird. I don't like it at all. Okay. It's just, if, if the knife wasn't so unique and if I didn't love the shape so much, I'd have got rid of it a long time ago. Okay. But I mean, it's, it's just a cool knife. It is a really cool knife. And just I, the yeah, action is crap. Well, I remember they, they gave it crappy action on purpose or so they claimed so that it wouldn't, yeah. So that it wouldn't, uh, uh, close on people's hands or something. I don't know. I don't know how, true that was or if that was just something they they said you know just to just to say that's hey, the dog walker yeah that's the dog walker. i love this thing <laughs> and and actually uh uh we've we've had an interview scheduled and and twice this week uh one once because uh jim had an issue and then the second time I had an issue and they were both electrically based i had no electricity he had no internet so we <laughs> I'm going to be talking to him tomorrow, but I love this thing. This, this, is, <laughs> this thing has really become part of my home life. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So there you go with that, uh, with that absolutely ridiculous, um, 
what is it again? Uh, 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 the Zabo. No, 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 not the Zabo. Now I'm talking to Brent. I mean, oh. that's ridiculously cool. This is just ridiculous with its three, <laughs> with its six thumb studs. Uh, uh, what are these guys called again? I can't remember. Quartermaster. Uh, Quartermaster, that's right. Quartermaster, and and all that that implies. I know Quartermaster was embattled because their their um, proprietor was really. <laughs> it's a great circus knife. It's wait. I'm sorry. Is this circus knife night? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that thing looks like a movie prop. Yeah, you know yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> it's like what they'd carry in a in in an off-brand alien movie. I can see it in Blade Runner. Right. Yeah, or Blade. Okay, so now I'm I'm dishing on this knife brand, but um, oh boy. <laughs> I have to admit, uh, there was a there was a time where I was like really wanted one because they were one of the few people to make besides cold steel to make a, a five plus inch folder. It just happened to look like that, which, yeah. which is, you know, it's, it's kind of compelling cause it is ve definitely very different, but I think they were basically busted for saying they were made in Texas, but, but no one could ever they find a, a manufacturing. They facility. weren't really because, I'm in a I'm in a quartermaster uh, Facebook group and uh, yeah they don't hardly post anything because this they've these are not eh. so they were I went to the pawn shop by the way did you it was weird so they were to to walk into a pawn shop and see that so they were outed for not actually being made there I think oh yeah. a thirteen lovely Old the school, thirteen two thousand four version it's oh, missing nice. a, it's missing quite a bit of things because i'm putting i'm gonna put some new things on it it's swedgeless too right yeah, yeah it is actually yeah, the, the, it's funny uh because the the i was just noticing um edwin had a, a an old custom cqc 13 and it was swedgeless and i was like huh i wonder if that's just a hallmark of a of a custom ground well, i don't know that's the old school like button style. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the domed pivot. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. That's that's beautiful. Is this one of the new? Is this new? No, this is the first production pina. It's called the Bronco. Ooh. You guys ever seen this one? Like this is a serious working knife right here, and it's it's thick, it's durable. It's got a very strong spring. Um, <clears throat> you can still get them at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Oh, yeah? Um, yeah. I don't, you know, I think they kind of hit the radar a little soon before his stuff really started to take off, his production stuff, I mean. Mm -hmm. um, it's a steal. The quality is outrageous. And if you want, you know, a bigger, because it's got to be at least four inches closed maybe 4.1 and this type, these titanium slabs are thick. Pena, you said um, Bronco? Pena Bronco. Yep. And okay. last time I checked, they had some OD and some natural. And, and um, is this, are these Riot made? I don't know for sure. I presume so. Okay. You know, <clears throat> but irregardless, you will not be disappointed in the quality of this construction. I will promise you that. Um, it is, it's a big, Full size, no nonsense hey, split joint knife. Man they just alive. have some on the floor on Smoky Mountain Knife Works too. Do you, oh, you yeah. live close to Smoky Mountain Knife Works? About twenty five minutes away. That's dangerous, man. Jeez. I live close to House of Blades. I know you all. You guys all live in in places that are unlike here. <laughs> what can I say, man? <laughs> I, I can really respect and appreciate that. I just wish Blade Show was still in Knoxville. Oh, was it in Knoxville? It was at one point, a long time ago. Wow, man. All right, all right, so did you go when it was? Or was this No, I don't even think I was born yet. Okay, I was gonna say, like you you seem like a pretty young man. Was this before your knife collecting days? Yeah, it had to be. I'm just twenty one, Bob. Twenty one? Man alive. Wow, man. I don't even. I'm 29. I don't look 29. <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna start talking about our ages. Can, <laughs> there I, you go, can Bobby. I be What's 21 again, please? <laughs> no. Oh, uh, that's a beauty. 
That's an old one? How do you this know is, it's an this, old one? This has D2 instead of the uh, crew wear. Has the blade shape changed at all? That blade shape looks a little uh, pointier, sleeker than what I'm seeing well, I, now. I put my own wicked edge on it, but yeah, over time. I'm an hour from St. Nick's. I, I take it, Shane, I take it that's a sweet <laughs> knife store that I don't have access to, right? <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> you guys. I'm back. Was researching ceramic bearings for Hinderer XM18 brought talk bought taco bearings brought taco bearings what are taco bearings they sound delicious <laughs> <laughs> are you near monkey edge ben yeah not far actually um 15 20 minute drive it's in mesa <sighs> not far from tempe i've been there a few, a few times it's not what you would think it is they have a really small retail showroom But I imagine you can go in there and whatever they have, you know, you can you can get your hands on, right? From I there. think so. You know, I think so. I think you might have to probably help to call ahead. <clears throat> but it, it's kind of weird, man. You walk in there and it's like highly decorated. They got some kind of weird dec decoration going on in there. They just have a couple glass showcases and some stuff that's not for sale, <clears throat> almost like a museum style. Oh, interesting. And yeah, and they have like just a couple showcases of you know, stuff for sale. So yeah, you're, you kind of asking for stuff, but like, unless you've done your homework ahead of time, you won't know what to ask for. Right. So it's, it's not exactly a retail store. It's like their warehouse that has a place you can walk into, you know? So, so NAF Sergeant is, uh, is a long 25 minutes from PVK Vegas. Jeez, man, you guys are all making me sick with jealousy. St. Nick's does some sweet spider co exclusives. He says, damn. They do actually. Ooh, that's that's beautiful, man. Is this new? Do I remember no, seeing this? I don't know if I've ever bust. This is the Zahn, not the Tonto. But since yep. we were talking about it, I grabbed it off the shelf. Yeah, man, that's that's. Uh, I really I got like one. those. I really like those. They're sweet. I I just love Chris Reeve knives. I just I'm a fanboy. Not like a super duper fanboy, but you know he makes them left handed, so I'm already you know, impressed. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what? You're going to pay for it. It's a fact. And that's a turnoff for some people, but you're not going to be let down by the quality. You just not. Yeah. And it's the same every time. Like I think every knife is delivered basically the same. I'm, clearly there's an issue here and there for people. I'm sure. Cause like anything. Right. Yeah. But as far as quality control, like does anyone really do it better on a production knife? I don't know. I really like the action on mine. I love this feel. The, the way it opens and closes is just so smooth. And, uh, you know, I understand why people use the adjective hydraulic, you know, mm -hmm. obviously it's not hydraulic, but it has that feel of like slight resistance, pleasing, smooth resistance. And it's like, like consistent resistance. It doesn't build up or anything. Yeah. It just almost like a flat line when you engage that friction. Um, Pancho says there's an old army Navy store near me that may or may not carry knives anymore. Yeah. Here, here. That, that was my best option a while ago. And then they just, they just evaporated. So now it's like, you can wander into Walmart and see what they have, or you can, you can go to Paragon sporting goods and look at some Gerbers and blister blister packs. I have to cross the shock for some knife retail shops. Yes, you do. Yeah. But you still seem to do all right over there, Steven. You you still seem to have some pretty, you, you you get your hands on some some sweetness over there, like your elderberry stockman you were carrying today. Lovely. Oh, there we go. Man, the, uh, this was the Blade Show exclusive for uh, for 2018. That was my first Blade Show. The only difference is they put Blade Show up there instead of not, instead of Microtech. And uh, I've I've always wondered on the bayonet is the top grind sharp. It'll shave out a box. Nice, nice. Yeah. So I mean, when we were when we were talking before about uh, out of the box sharpness, they really are incredibly sharp, especially um, given like especially with with the daggers. Given the the angle of approach, I've always kind of felt like they're sharper than they should be. You know what I mean? Like, or or than I expect. The daggers are very pointy too. That's cool. Is that a little UTX? Yeah, the Spartan one. 
Oh, that's so cool. 85? Eight, 70. 70, okay. I want to own a knife shop so bad. <laughs> I know, me too. Because that way you get to experience them all, but you don't have to. It's like being an uncle, you know, you can send them home or you can, you can, you can have it and see if you really want to keep it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like you, you discover there are some things you can't do without Facebook groups are a godsend. I, I hear that. Now I, I have not, uh, I have not acquired, oh, see, look, this is the one that I fixed. It's, it's just, so. There, I'm My so UTX-85 will do that. I've never been able to call that a reliable knife, my, my, my sample. Got you. I swear, yeah. guys, this never happens. Uh, but for, with this one in particular, the only reason I've – the only reason this one is not reliable is because I've, I've monkeyed with it because I don't like the ring. When, it, when you bring it in, you hear the spring. <laughs> So I'll do the thing that they say on the website and spray, but I don't spray the the oil that they recommend. I use some gun oil or something. I figure, hey, it's moving parts. It should it should work, right? And uh, that was that was Frank Zappa, but uh, but it 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 gets gummed up, and then I have to mess around with it. I just bought a 308 Battle Star. Oh, Stars and Stripes from USA Made Blade. It's funny, Chicago twenty three, that you should say that because. Uh, when Brant said, I want to own a knife shop, that's immediately what I thought of is, is a, a USA made blade. The only place I've bought, no, that's not true, but I've, I've bought hinderers from there and I really like that place. And, uh, yeah, Scott just, Whittington's awesome. Yeah. He's, he seems really cool. I like his videos and he seems to really enjoy it. And, uh, yeah. How cool would it be just to, just to have all those things at your, at your, behest is that the right word at your fingertips we'll say hey i have a, a knife fight tonight and since we have you guys i i want you to do it and i i wanted to bring it up before one of you decided to dip but it's 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 a good one i think and and it's more the both sides are more similar than you may think all right so tonight's knife fight is gas station knife versus art knife so now we're talking we're talking a fifteen dollar knife versus a fifteen hundred to fifteen thousand dollar knife, but when you think about it, they they aesthetically they try and tackle the same things often. So we'll think about that and we'll get to it in a minute. Hinderers are hard to get. What do you what do you say, Brent? Go with that. Chicago twenty three says hinderers are hard to get. Not all the time. If you know the good places. Exit now. Someone has ADT. <laughs> uh, I'm not supposed to make that noise, so that concerned me for a second. But I think my wife figured it out, so it sounds oh, like okay. we're okay. Either it's <laughs> going to get really loud in here or not. We'll find out. <laughs> I, I remember that voice. Uh, so, uh, I, okay, that's interesting that Chicago 23 said that because, and, and then we'll get to the knife fight, because uh, um, uh, Metal Complex just did a review of the Viper that Viper knife designed by Hinderer, he was pretty oh, impressed with it. The Viper and, he, and he just sort yeah, the Viper Storm. And he just sort of said offhand that people are having a hard time getting Hinderers right now. Is that is that the case or what? Are you are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Uh, no. You're, you're in, a in resident a sense, expert. Because Rick is working on Blade Show, of course, and he's coming out with all these new knives, which, of course, the auto. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know for sure, but um, like in Scott Winnington's voice, ask Sam. Like Sam, the guy, the general manager of Hinder Knives. Oh, um, okay. Okay. All right. So you're saying it, it's kind of catch as catch can right now because they're gearing up for Blade Show. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Quack says, Caleb, if you're 21, you were 18 at Blade Show 2018. I think that's a minimum age to buy a knife. Jumping at the opportunity, I see. Yeah, right. Let me at it. They uh, they don't even ask. They don't care. <laughs> that, was, that was actually my high school senior trip. Oh man, I jumped at that opportunity. That's that's pretty sweet. Where'd you go on your high school senior trip, Bob? We didn't do that. I don't know. We didn't have a high school senior trip. I I did uh, when I was a ju uh, junior. I went to Germany, but that was like academic. 
like you know we were studying and we got we went together with a uh, uh you know i i lived with a host family and it was it was cool it was a great trip and uh you know i it certainly didn't go under my own steam so i was very lucky to to uh to go but we didn't do ju uh senior trip and and that didn't exist in ohio in 1989 I, apparently <laughs> where did you go ben we went to cancun oh. and like we were the last year that kids went to cancun <laughs> because you know you're just tearing loose in that place and it's probably completely ridiculous that our parents let us do that you know yes. in hindsight yeah but I it have, was awesome i have been to cancun and and yeah and well, my best friend's dad was friends with frank zappa how cool we got to interview him in junior high and won the state history day contest how cool man i love i love frank zappa uh that that is a pretty sweet trip what is that what are those things you're these holding? are some uh, knife stands i designed and printed off so anybody oh, nice. anybody with us at the pit needs to take home a couple of them i printed enough for for a oh, lot of man. people to take them home oh i want one for sure and i'll and we can show it off here it could be like a, a great couple Oh, Show nice. us how it works real quick. How does that? Because I got these plastic easels I got from Amazon, and they're okay, but I don't love them. You know what I mean? You mean? Uh... <laughs> oh, nice. See if I find something okay. to set it on. Find one without a gigantic flipper tab. There we go. Oh cool, man! Very nice, man. Cool. Yeah, dig it. I'm definitely going to snag one or two from you. Are you talking about you... these, Ben? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I have. I got three 10-packs <laughs> <laughs> Yep, from Amazon. Three where you could probably buy skateboard tape, bro. You could probably get that at Amazon. If they don't have it, I'll be shocked. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, man. Yeah, that's that's where you go for all that. We went to Bush Gardens, Virginia senior trip. Awesome. Love Bush Gardens. That's out in James City County, Virginia. <laughs> Bob went by horse and <laughs> yes. All right, come on. Come on. We're going out to the western part of the county. Let's they go. We went and homesteaded. We don't have all year. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you prefer <laughs> Baldy? Do you prefer when a website keeps all the links for the sold out knives or that they delete the links? Uh, uh, I would prefer when they keep them up and go back and check on sold out. Now, yeah, I, I would too, just as long as they're clear about it. I don't like, uh, I mean, my long time, one of my favorite is knife center, but I don't like how they handle that. They'll, they'll be like pre-order even, even if, uh, well, I get the feeling, even if there's no pre-order to be had, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like I don't like how they handle it, but Okay. Arizona customers does a really good job of that. We went to uh, a party for our senior trip. Yeah, right. Exactly. We we tried to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop there. Who knows? Mm -hmm. My dad might be watching. All right. So gas station knives versus art knives. Who wants what? I think, Caleb, uh, you need to be in this uh, debate because this is your first time here. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, and Ben, thank you for for doing the shout out to to people that join uh, at the the knifejunkie.com slash join link. That's greatly appreciated. Also, so I will since this is your first time out. Uh, who who would like to? Uh, you'll get to choose which side you choose. Uh, I don't necessarily suggest you choose your favorite, or you know, this is a debate, so you should be able to do either side. Put yourself in the mind of that gas station knife buyer. Or put yourself in the mind of that highfalutin art knife buyer, and uh, and we'll go from there. But who wants to debate this gentleman? All right, Brent. You're <laughs> no Ben. Did you want to? Yeah, I was going to say if Brent if Brent doesn't want to, I'll do it. Uh, you know, it's up to him. But I, I'm happy to do it if Brent doesn't want to do it. I want to hear what Ben's um, opinions on on it. <clears throat> I got this is kind of a fun one, Bob, because it's just hmm. too. Like literally, like you said, they're polar ends of the spectrum, but they're both knives, right? They're both knives, and and, and I well, this is the argument I would use. So I'll, I'll wait till afterward. I, I I I think they're they're closer than we might imagine. Um. So, 
Uh, let's see, Caleb, great job on your first guest appearance, says Monster. Monster, Thanks, let's see you here sometime, man. Next time, though, because it's it's getting late, and uh, I gotta, I, I'm pulling this into the station. But uh, speaking of station, gas station knives. Who's taking gas station knives? Hmm. I guess I'll take them. Uh, Incognito said, graduated in 2018 also, but my trip was going to going hunting near Austin. That sounds awesome. I need someone to take me hunting. I'm, I've never, ever been hunting, not even as like a, a, in the sidecar. And it's, it's interesting to me. I'd love to eat hunted meat. You know All what right. you need to do, Bob, real quick? What's that? Get one of these Texas boys, one of these Oklahoma boys, take you hunting for hogs, but with dogs and a Bowie knife. Yes. Get the guns. Yes, 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 yes. I, yes. I got to do that with my cousin, and it's the first time I ever hunted anything. And I'll tell that story another day, but oh my gosh, man, like that's the hunting experience you deserve right there. That Bowie knife, you'll see how it really works. Okay, so I, I've always joked that I want to do that because I imagined that people who hunt hogs with knives and dogs, you know, have some experience. They don't just like start, you know, midlife to, to do this. But it, it is something that that uh, I have a romantic notion about because one of my favorite characters of all time, Odysseus, has the scar on his leg from, from when he was a 12-year-old hunting hogs. And that's the one way that his old nursemaid can tell that it's him through the disguise that Athena puts on him. Uh, if you need to brush up, the Odyssey is a, f a incredible story. Everyone should read it. It's so awesome. You just have to find the right translation and, uh, without the thous and the, and the these. And uh, it's, it's a great adventure story. Um, but that hog hunting scar to me is the romantic link to, to today. So I would love to try that. I'll take one of these off the wall. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take the barong. All right. No, actually, I would take my tops hog hunter, wild hog hunter, and, and take that. But uh, thank you. And I will I will tell my wife that because she laughs every time I suggest that I do that. So I'll say, no, no, no. It's a thing people do. She'll say, it's not a thing you do. I'll say, okay, dear. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. Caleb, gas station knife or art knife? Uh. I'll take gas station. That's interesting. Okay. All right. You have one minute and a half to state your case. You don't have to use your whole time, but you cannot go over. Starting in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen of the Knife Junkie podcast, I present to you gas station knives. Now, you can have a really nice display piece of a William Henry. That'd be all you have in a, in a room. That's the only thing set up. Or you can have a hundred of other knives that it look pretty much the same. I mean, you can get a vast array of colors, and uh, you don't really need the Damascus, do you? And you can just print the Damascus on the blade. You won't ask, I won't tell. You know, it's going to look just as nice. You can have them up on your mantle coming in. You can afford it. Then you can eat with gas station knives. You can even afford to carry this knife. And I'm sure they've got extra stock. You buy one or two of them, you break it. You've got another one, and you still love the look of it. Yeah, I mean, bags are nice. Do you need a bag? You don't need a bag. Uh, that's that's all I got, Bob. All right, that was good. That was a minute, and uh, I think that's a pretty good argument. Uh, that's kind of where I would have been going. Uh, all right, so Ben, are you ready? Let's do this. It's Art Knife, and you're on in three, two, one. All right, so what is an Art Knife? At first glance, an art knife is something that was made to look good. But what an art knife really is, is the highest form of knife making craft. So for example, the gentleman who made this art knife that demands such a high premium is a master in blade grinding, is a master in heat treating, is a master in material fitment, is a master in like tang construction. <clears throat> so what you're actually buying is not just something that's aesthetically pleasing, but that's built to the absolute highest standard. So while yes, you may be able to afford 100 gas station knives, really all you'll ever need is that one art knife because it will never let you down like that gas station knife will almost certainly let you down. So save your pennies and invest in the highest, greatest form of craftsmanship in knife making and buy that art knife. 
bam also a minute also a great argument all right so let me let me explain to you how this came to me um i was thinking you know it's it's hard to come up with these knife fights after a while because we've done so many of them um but we hadn't done this one and to me they're you know opposite ends of the spectrum but at the same they're so opposite they meet because they're both going for this outlandish sculptural just beyond what we think of as a knife for the design uh you know gas station knives crazy designs you know in the shape of a mermaid or or whatever you know the crazy colors you know that you you wonder are these actually steel or whatever and then and then you look all the way around the dial of expense to the art knife and it's kind of the same thing oh my gosh all these materials and colors and crazy shapes and everything they're almost the same almost except one is just like spewed out by a machine and the other one is like painstakingly constructed but i i dare say they both take a a, a tremendous amount of design even if they're fugly you know what i mean that so that's why I, th I thought it would be interesting to see that you see you guys uh, argue this. Uh, Hollywood Tactical says today's gas station knife is yesterday's mid range knife. What TBH? Don't know that. To the, be uh, honest, to, be, to honest. be honest, thank you, thank you. Manufacturing has gotten so good and so cheap, the gap is dramatically closing. I got a pile of M Tech button locks, which are not half bad. Interesting, yeah, the, yeah, uh, that's another thing is uh, as as manufacturing, um you know, becomes cheaper and cheaper, like really good manufacturing, you're going to have some, some crazy looking things that are actually produced nicely. But the person with the art knife will be afraid to use it. That is a good point. And I think that's a point that Caleb brought up and he said, they will have extra stock and you can afford an extra one. So, so get it in case it breaks. Gas station knife makers aren't dumb. They're starting to take considerable cues from custom makers like two-tone blades, anodizing, etc. Interesting. Now, I don't live in a place where gas stations can actually sell them, but every once in a while, now I understand m -techs, Bob. Interesting. I don't have any m -techs. <laughs> I, w I don't have any m -techs. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, see what I mean? If you ever go hog hunting with a Bowie knife in Texas, count me in. All right, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. Maybe, maybe that's... Hmm. Maybe maybe that is the senior class trip. Maybe, uh, and now that I'm approaching my senior years, maybe that's what I do. Maybe I, I get a bunch of you nut jobs together and we go hunting hogs because I know that they have a lot of them out there. They're like, uh, they do. Yes, we do. They're a, they're an issue, right? Sometimes they're they're vermin. They're you have killed as many of them as you can. Delicious, delicious vermin. I I would say. No, they don't eat them. The guys I know that hunt them, like the, the males are rancid. They just leave the carcasses out there and the coyotes and vultures, like pick them clean in like a day. They're gone. <laughs> I love so you just, just stack them, you know? Okay. So, so in, uh, in Tuscany, Italy, uh, I, I, I know from family that, uh, um, one of the one of the big dishes is wild hog ragu, you know, and I've had it and it is delicious. I do love, uh, I do love, wild boar they call it boar but i mean it's probably the same thing right yeah they destroy the land says monster i've heard that the locks of a lot of gas station knives will fail i think you're uh i think you're right about that i uh, see that's that's uh that's an area where maybe a lot goes into the design of them but i don't think a lot goes into the engineering of them incognito says gas station knives was the best thing that i found out as a as a kid but them screws always go loose for no reason. They just kind of, they just fall. They give up the ghost. They're like, I, I can't believe I went through all of the, all of the pain of being born as a screw. And now I'm finding myself in a, in a gas station. <laughs> all right, guys. I, I had the stop pin fall out of them first. You know, just or anything because of the, the smack of the blade. They're like, I, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> Guys, we're reaching the witching hour of midnight, and I think uh, I think that's going to about do it for for me and for Jim. But coming up on episode 220 on Sunday, it's Eric Kramer of Kramer Custom Knives. Where do I have it? Oh, it's right here. 
the maker of the Voodoo, the Grinch, and several other super awesome knives. He also, uh, for a long while, was making beautiful folders. He put that to to rest for a while, and he's coming back to them. Uh, who has? Oh, oh, Dirk Warning has one, and uh, showed it off the other day on Instagram. Those were beautiful. I can't wait till he starts making those again. Oregon Knife Guy, great to have. Great to see you. If you really want to go hunting, come to Oregon. I'll take you out and get. Oh, okay. Hit me up. Western Oregon has an open hunt where you don't have to draw for a tag. That's cool. I don't know, man. One of these days, I might take you up on that. I really might. Monster says, thank you, Bob, Jim, Ben, Caleb Brandt for the great live stream. It is our pleasure. I think I speak for the rest of these gentlemen here. Oregon Knife Guy, that sounds sweet. I agree, says Hollywood Tactical. All right, gents. Uh, much success, Ben, says Stephen. Yes, indeed. Thank you as always, my friend. Indeed. And, and I have no doubt about that. Not only is his uh, heart and energy in the right place, but, man, those knives are just damn sweet. New knife fight, M-Tech versus Microtech, maybe next week, actually. That sounds like a good one. Excellent stream. Thank you, Poncho. All right, guys. Chris. Are having a stream next week? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask the same thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know Jim would say yes, <laughs> but I don't know after a day of driving down to Atlanta if, if that'll work. I am going to bring my computer and my microphone. Uh, so maybe. I don't know. I'll, I will post something on Instagram and on YouTube saying whether or not one way or the other. And uh, if so, please join me so I'm not sitting in some hotel room and, uh, and, and just. I'll definitely join. Barking out in the can't, dark. <laughs> can't wait right. to see you guys at Blade. Caleb, yeah, man. Be there, right? Yeah, I'll be there. Yep, Bob, you're going to be there. Anybody? I hope you come. Can't wait to meet y'all for sure. All right. Well, you heard it from the man. We will be shaking hands next week, guys. And for everyone else out there, and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, thank you all for joining. It's been a pleasure. Of course, check out our other shows, and uh, we will see you next week. Take Good care. night, y'all.